All right, this is a video for people who are studying both attitudinal psyche and the objective personality system. That is, attitudinal psyche, the system developed by Rob Zeke Colopy, and the objective personality system developed by Dave and Shan. Now, first of all, Rob Zeke seemingly found some loose correlations, like having one E in his system, which is kind of like first slot feeling function, with being an ETP in Myers-Briggs or in its objective personality equivalents. That's, you know, these are tenuous little connections. What I propose is a more perhaps interesting way of not necessarily studying the equivalence of the two systems. It's not about collapsing one of them into the other. It's not about being able to get rid of one of the systems because we don't need it anymore. I think they're both very valuable. But just understanding conceptually how there are some interesting similarities. Now, if you watched my structural intro to the attitudinal psyche system, you'll see that the sextas of attitudinal psyche are six basic polarities generated by combining the function letters developed by Jung. Feeling versus thinking, feeling versus sensing, feeling versus intuition, uh, thinking versus sensing, thinking versus intuition, and sensing versus intuition. So these are all six possible permutations of the functions the, from Jung's four function model. And instead of just saying feeling and thinking are opposed and sensing and, and intuition are opposed, we can also see oppositions between feeling and sensing, feeling and intuition, thinking and sensing, and thinking and intuition. So it's like adding four extra oppositions in that sense compared to what we normally work with. Okay, now what does objective personality do? Well, objective personality seems to maintain the same fundamental oppositions of the Grant stack and Myers-Briggs. Thinking is opposed to feeling. Sensing is opposed to intuition. But there's something interesting going on. And it's something I learned looking at our best match type. Our best match is opposite in every coin except info or energy dominance. Now, what happens if you look at somebody who is your exact opposite in every way, in every possible dichotomy, except info or energy dominance? Which, by the way, if you could be opposite in that one, great, but you can't because as soon as you're opposite in that one, you're no longer opposite in one of the others. So it's a sort of structural design of the system that you must be both the same infodom if you're opposite in every other way, just like you must both be in the same quadra. And I realize I'm using some advanced typological terms here. Hopefully my viewers are familiar with them. You know, hopefully you come to this video because you're interested in both attitudinal psyche and the objective personality system because this is somewhat of an advanced point, I guess you could say. Okay, so let's take my type. I'm an ENFP, my type code and objective personality, MF, NEFI, consume, play, last sleep, social one. Okay, kind of a mouthful, right? It's a big, big type code. Objective personality has these long type codes because there are now 2048 types when you include the social types. Okay, so it seems pretty basic in that I'm lead, extroverted, intuitive. That's in the polarity with introverted sensing. So you go, okay, here's somebody who's in the NS opposition. Remember, as I was saying in attitudinal psyche, there are six fundamental oppositions, one for each sexta. First slot, intuition, last slot, sensing, and vice versa. First slot, thinking, last slot, feeling, and vice versa. Then each combination of thinking with intuition and sensing and feeling with intuition and sensing. So you really end up with these six fundamental dichotomies. 
Now, so far, it seems like objective personality does not represent these dichotomies because it's limited to the traditional Grant stack, traditional Myers-Briggs dichotomies of intuition as opposed to sensing, thinking as opposed to feeling. It seems like there's no room in objective personality to have these extra oppositions. And yet, let's look at my exact opposite, my perfect match. So as said, I'm MF, NEFI, consume play, last sleep. My perfect match is FM, TESI, last sleep, consume, play. So, because the, that person, my best match, is opposite in every coin, they're actually a decider, not an observer. They're a single decider, not a single observer, right? Because they're opposite on the, the observer-decider coin. They do, like me, have an extroverted lead function, but unlike me, they're an introvert because the introvert-extrovert coin is switched. And they do, like me, have an introverted last function, but again, that doesn't make them an extrovert because their last animal is extroverted, it makes them an introvert. I realize this is a little bit complex if you're not familiar with the nuances of sort of advanced objective personality analysis. But if you bear with me, you'll see something really interesting here. So my opposite is somebody who is really fully embodying my shadow, or even my anima, my polarity. They're fully embodying my polarity, and as such, that polarity is actually part of me. It's actually part of me that, that they are, the, the part of me that I don't prioritize, the part of me that is left sort of dormant deep within me. And as I develop and as I grow, I grow into that polarity to begin to embody characteristics of that, that type, right? So the more I grow, the more I look like an, an FM, TESI, last sleep, consume, play person, because I'm growing into my opposite. I'm learning to use my demons. I'm maturing towards my polarity. So together, we take my type and that type, and we actually see something very interesting. We see that, essentially, if I could put it this way, that there's a growth from intuition to thinking, and there's a growth in the demon level from sensing to feeling. So I have this very interesting demon growth towards sensing, sorry, towards feeling from sensing. Towards feeling from sensing. Now, if we look at my attitudinal psyche type, I have first slot feeling, last slot sensing. It's called first slot emotion, 1E, and last slot physics or um, foundation for F, kind of interchangeably called physics or foundation, symbolized by F. And uh, so because I'm a 1E for F, I'm an EVLF type. Because I'm EVLF, because I'm 1E for F, I live in this world of the dichotomy of sensing and feeling. So how interesting is that? That objective personality is basically saying, I'm growing from fourth slot sensing to fourth slot feeling. I mean, that's not literally what objective personality is saying, but we can extrapolate that structurally from the fact that we grow to our opposites and that the opposite is sort of asymmetrical compared to Myers-Briggs. In Myers-Briggs, an ENFP grows towards their dual, like in Socionics, where the term dual is from. So an ENFP grows towards ISTJ, right? That's the classical classic Myers-Briggs sort of idea, and that kind of comes from socionics, perhaps even, arguably, ostensibly. So classical Myers-Briggs, classical socionics, sort of classic ideas here are on this basic polarity where the intuition always grows towards the sensing, very symmetrically, right? Well, in this system, 
we see that actually my inferior sensing is growing towards my perfect matches inferior feeling. That is to say, my fourth slot sensing grows towards my perfect matches fourth slot feeling. So it's interesting just to me, now I haven't tested this at scale, but it's interesting to me that I live in the sexta, in attitudinal psyche, of the polarity between sensing and feeling. And that polarity, which does not exist in conventional Myers-Briggs, is sort of represented in objective personality by growth towards your opposite. Because the opposite is not symmetrical. You know, I'm an ENFP, my opposite's an ESTJ. I have inferior sensing, my opposite has inferior feeling. So in a weird way, my sensing is growing towards feeling, which is exactly the dichotomous world that I live in, the sexta that I live in, in attitudinal psyche. Again, I don't know if this holds up at scale. Could be a funny peculiarity of my particular type. But it's interesting to me that when you look at each objective personality type with its opposite, by reversing all the coins except info or energy dominance, what you end up with is every possible permutation of growth, just like the six sextas of attitudinal psyche. So you end up with not only intuition growing to sensing and sensing growing to intuition, or thinking growing to feeling and feeling growing to thinking, you end up with cases of intuition growing to thinking, sensing growing to feeling. You know, you end up with these new polarities that exist in the attitudinal psyche sextas but do not exist in conventional Myers-Briggs theory.